Um, well, first, the part we're working on in India is the northern part of the country, is the, is the uh, basin of the river Ganges. Um, and w w why it's important, it's one of the world's largest uh, basins that's dominated by the large-scale groundwater systems. Um, and, and what happened in India and what affected really the, the water resources is one of the uh, uh, largest environmental change in the human history, which is known as the India's Green Revolution. So, so what really happened in the last 60 years or so is the change in the land use, um, mainly from the barren forested land uh, into agricultural land. Um, and, and consequently, large amount of water um, has been abstracted from the groundwater and, and put on the surface. Um, so that's, that, that's one, one um, uh, reason for the changes in the water resources. The other one is really the way water is used and the way farmers irrigate. Um, and the reason for that is that in, in most parts of India, electricity is really cheap. So, so what farmers do, they use the water in a quite unregulated way. So, so both the combination of, of the increased um, uh, areas of agricultural land and the way the water is used affected uh, significantly the water resources. And uh, what has been noticed is the large decrease in the groundwater levels um, uh, in the northern India, which affect the whole system in a very complex way. Um, if we talk about the impacts of climate change on the water resources, um, um, if we look at what we call the mean, the mean seasonal uh, precipitation, uh, n the trends, no trends have been observed. But what has been observed and what is happening, um, which is not specific just for India, but you know, for the whole kind of world, is the uh, increased frequency of the, of the heavy rain events and reduced frequency of the, of the low to, to moderate rainy days. Uh, but the other thing which is specific for India, and, and I think it's really important to emphasize, is that India ha has been um, um, found uh, as one of the three world hotspots for what we call land atmosphere coupling. So what it really means is that additional amount of water that's been put on the land surface affects the soil moisture. Um, and that fluxes can feed back into the atmosphere and, 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 and change the, the cloud formation and convection. So, so the hypothesis is that, that the soil moisture changes can affect the monsoon variability, which could have significant impacts uh, on, on the whole hydrological cycle in the northern Ganges. Um, but that question um, about the temporal and the spatial scale of these changes is, is still a very big research question that needs to be answered. If we talk about the impacts of climate change in the future uh, and the impacts of water resources, um, the short answer is yes, it will have significant impact. Um, and the main reason for that is that the water resources in, in, in Ganges and, and the whole India are, are highly dependent on the precipitation patterns. Um, and in India, most of the rainfall comes uh, during only the monsoon season, which is just a couple of months within a year from, from June to October. Uh, so any change in either timing or duration or the intensity of monsoon will have a huge impact on the water resources. Um, but the, the other thing that we probably should emphasize is that what will have even more significant impact is the combined impact of climate change and the land use change and, and, the, and the human behavior to, towards the water use in, in India. So if we talk about um, the human behavior and, and, and the other um, factors that can in impact water resources in India, uh, uh, the, the pressures on the water resources will increase. Um, and there, there are two main reasons for that. So one is the large population increase. So India already has around 1.2 billion people living there, and that number is, 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 is expected to, to increase. Um, so the other reason um, is the other change that's happening in the India, and that's a rapid urbanization. So people are moving into cities, and the cities are developing. So, so what will that um, 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 induce is the increased water demand from both the domestic and the industry sector, which will put additional pressure on, on the water that's already um, necessary for, for the irrigation. To have sustainable water use in the future, um, uh, with all the impacts of climate change, 
the first thing we need to really do is to understand all the processes that are happening there. So as I mentioned, um, uh, Upper Ganges is a very complex system. So we need to understand and model all the feedbacks and the processes that are happening there uh, using an integrated modeling tool. So once we have that and once we can assess current water resources and also look at the future projections both in the climate and land use change and have some assessment of, of the water uh, resources availability in the future, then, then the next step um, towards sustainable water use and helping people to make the most of, of their water resources is what we call integrated water management. Um, and, and that kind of um, uh, policy uh, can, can give a valuable uh, information to the policy decision makers um, uh, and the final result should be the really rational water allocation decisions.